have bars. We we good on the we good on the bars. Um, I should be fine. So if yeah, I mean I'm ready to go if you are. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure because sometimes, you know, the headset makes for bad audio. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. All you have to do is stay. Yeah, that's it. That is it. And we're back once again. What's going on, everybody? Lockout men. And I am back with another podcast for you guys. Welcome back to the Lockout Men Podcast Show. I am your host, Lockout Men. And in today's episode, I have a podcast interview for you guys. Yes, sir. Interviews don't stop. They just keep coming in. They keep coming after me like, yo, I got a story to tell. I'm like, yo, I'm here to listen. That's what's up. I want to welcome the LOM community in on this uh, on this episode as well. So welcome, welcome. Uh, if you guys like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more. Also, that all button. You all, you guys can also hook a brother up with some coffee. The coffee app is in the description, and along with the cash app, dollar sign, lockout man. Well, let's 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 go ahead and get into who I got on the show today. This young lady comes by way of YouTube. Interesting videos that uh that I have seen on her channel. She goes cross state lines every day, every day. She just. She she just trucking right along. So what we're gonna do with no further with no further ado, we're gonna welcome to the show Fabulous Trucker. It's the F A B O L O U S. F A B O L O U S. Yes, sir. So you're fabulous. You're fabulous, huh? Fabulous. Yeah. Okay. Gotta keep it fabulous know that <laughs> so what's going on with you where, where are you at in this part of the world right now i'm actually in virginia and i'm heading up to west virginia okay okay so you what, what you drive mostly the southwest the the south you're all over what what what, what do you normally drive so recently i've actually switched to doing just the east um, but about a month ago, I was everywhere. Um, I'm only about two weeks into the whole East Coast thing, mm -hmm. so I've done it pretty much all of it. Okay, okay, okay. So, fabulous trucker, tell tell us uh tell us a little bit about yourself. How how you got started in uh, trucking and and how's your journey been so far? So I actually got started. Um, I was actually 18 when I thought about doing this, and it came about because I used to be really big into, like, building parts. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of times I would take, you know, a pickup truck, go pick up one of the U-Haul trailers, and go pick up a car. Um, I would always need help driving them because I had no idea how to drive a trailer, and I pretty much just got the idea, like, hey, I want to be able to drive anything. And I told a couple of people what I was thinking. They told me I couldn't do it, so I went out and did it. Uh, that was my start. And once I started doing the classes, I was 19, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And just the, they fueled me by telling me I couldn't do it. And so I went out and did it. I loved it. And here I am. So you the type of so you the type of driver you like you like fuck it like if you tell me what I can't do I'm about to go out here and show you what I can do. Absolutely, it's everything I've been told that I can't do. I I tell them all right, give me give me a little bit of time and I'm gonna do it. And every single thing to this day I've been able to do. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Where 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 are you from? Like. Where where are you from? So I'm actually from Virginia, um, in between Charlottesville and Richmond, a little tiny county called Savannah. 
So what was life like growing up? Uh, it's a small town life. Um, everyone knows your business. Pretty much everyone knows who you are. And honestly, you know, from just the family perspective, it was always kind of like, you're going to stay in Virginia the rest of your life. And that hmm. was a big reason for me to get into this. I didn't want that. So you stayed, so you like stayed in a small town that everybody is in your business, huh? So every, was everybody that was in your business, was they, was they nice to you? Was they, or was they mean to you or, or what? Um, it all, it depends. Mostly people were kind of neutral towards me. Um, I can pretty much adapt and get along with just about anyone. So no one was really mean to me. But I did kind of struggle throughout life with, I got called a nerd a lot because, you know, in school, like, I was always the one to be basically on their shit and excelling in life. So I've always kind of been ahead for my age, so I had a lot of haters. Hmm. Well, you know, they said people, but, they say people were haters. They, 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 they like, they got it going on. They, they don't have it going on if they don't have no haters, huh? Oh, yeah, and they were, it was a lot of undercover haters, but they would, like, you know, they were real nice to my face, but behind my back, it was always, oh, do you hear what, you know, so-and-so's doing? It's not crazy. They were those types of people. Well, you know, you got that. You you got the same people that's on YouTube. They're, they're smile, they're, they're, they're smiling your face and then cutthroat you behind your back. Crazy, right? Oh, yes. It, it's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, all right. So overall, has it been uh overall doing your trucking journey, has it been has it been smooth or or if not, what were some of the struggles that you came across? Um, so it has not been smooth. Uh that's too bad. But one of my biggest struggles was my um uh, motor vehicle record. So I had a lot of speeding tickets. I got a lot when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, I had 11 points on my life. And mm -hmm. I think at 12 is when you actually Yeah, 12. Points. Yeah, so, if, you get, if you get 12, that's that's it. I had 11 I had eleven points on my license at one time, too. So, yeah, you, yeah. you, get, that one, yeah. you get that one extra point before the rest of them drop off. Yeah, you. I think it's suspended for, like, what, six months or is it a year? I think it's six months, but I don't know how that would work with a CDL holder. I have no idea. Okay. How long have you... Yeah, that was... Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, no, I was saying that was one of the biggest struggles because, you know, you're a professional driver. Companies aren't going to take someone with a really bad record. Exactly, exactly. So how long, how long has it been? How long has it been since you've been driving? Driving in total now for about I'd say only about three months. Oh, okay. So you just so you just recently got your CDL. So how, how did you go by how did you go by obtaining them? Um. So well, I've actually had my CDL since 2018. Um. I just had to wait until all the tickets fell off to actually get a job. Um, okay. But. Yeah, so I actually went to kind of an independent school. Uh, they're called Chipper and Joy. Mm -hmm. And so basically all they did was, you know, they trained you for a month. Uh, so Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. And then on, you know, that last week, they sent you to the DMV and test out, like, through third party. And mm -hmm. that's how I got my CDL. Okay, okay. So before before you got into trucks, what what you was doing beforehand? I actually did a lot of warehouse work. Um, you did a lot of I what work? I worked for a warehouse. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, um, that was I mean pretty much it. I did that for a long time, and, and that was kind of what. Once I got my CDL, I was kind of like, man, I'm over this. I'm ready to go see some stuff. So I was about to ask you, since you've been in warehouse, what what made you decide to be a trucker? Like, did you, since you're doing the warehouse work, did you see all of the truck drivers coming in, going out? Yeah, it was a lot of 
lot of that and, you know, seeing that kind of made me think of the life of a trucker. And to me, like, trucking is not the job, it's a whole lifestyle because, I mean, you're living basically on the road, especially being an OCR truck driver. And once I thought about it, I was like, you know, I could just stay in different states, like, multiple times a week. I get to see so many things. And the food, oh my God, so I love food. So I'm thinking I can drop all types of food on the road. And it was between that and then again being told I couldn't do it. And that was what really pushed me. Now, being a being a female out here and you is only like three months in the game, uh, what... <laughs> Anytime, anytime since you've been out here, anytime you get lonely while driving, how do you deal with that? That's a tough one. I'm actually still trying to figure that out. But if I start feeling any type of emotion, which of course I'm a very um, emotional person, but I normally would just call someone I love. So call a family member or, you know, someone I'm really close to and Typically, that kind of cuts down on the loneliness. Okay, okay. So, are you, are you, are you in a, are you in a situation right now, or, or what, what do you call it? Hold on, let me. I, I think there's a new word for it. Are you in an entanglement right now? <laughs> so, yes. Um, I, I guess entanglement relationship, whatever you would like to call it. Yes. Oh, okay, so he pretty much he pretty much keeps you company. Is he's a, is he a driver too, or or no? Um, no. So he is actually an aerospace technician. Um, he okay. is, it's such a huge change for the both of us. We actually met um, at my old warehouse job, and then he moved. He left that um, warehouse job and went right across the hall. So we saw each other every day, and now. It's kind of a huge change for both of us. How how did he how did he take it by how how did he take it when you told him that, hey, I'm about to finally go over the road? What what did he say? There I can't even remember. He was very supportive. Um it just I could kind of hear the the doubt, you know, coming from him, like kind of like, man, like if you're gonna be gone that long, like I was out five to six weeks at a time and of course I'm going to be the first to tell you on the podcast I am no longer with my first trucking job um so I haven't even put that on my YouTube yet but hold on I didn't hold, hold on fabulous guy. fabulous I didn't catch that you're <laughs> you're no longer with who now so my first company that I went with was with Swift I am no longer working Okay, okay. So you no longer with uh with Swift. Uh no, I'm not. so that's so that's your first company that that you came that you came into when you got well, of course Swift gave you your gave gave you your opportunity to get out of here because you're a new driver. Uh what was yeah. your what was your experience doing, you know, doing training with them, if if any? Oh, oh no. The training wasn't horrible. Um, it's actually one of the more extensive training programs that is out there. I just wish they had better mentors or trainers. Um, some of them, and I don't want to go in very much detail, but they, a That's lot of them had their CDL for about a year. And mm. that was kind of my situation. So I was kind of like, she was learning with me as well and it got very frustrating do you let me ask you this being that you that that you was in that type of situation with another driver that's that don't have that much experience as you and you already said it was uh very frustrating is it is it more frustrating trying to deal with that while you're trying to learn yourself absolutely because i when I'm trying to learn, I see other, like other people's help. And especially when they are supposed to be there to teach you and to help you, if they don't know the answers themselves, it just gets very frustrating because now, you know, both of you don't know what to do. And that can cause some very sticky, dangerous situations. 
How long how, did you finish out with her, or you you had to finish out with another trainer? I actually finished out with her. I was with her for a total of I think five weeks. Oh, okay, okay. So about about a month and a first week or something like that. Yeah. Overall, would he, overall, you already said it was frustrating, but overall, you finished out with her. What's your whole opinion of the whole thing? Would you would you do it again? Honestly, I would do it again simply because I'm very thankful for Slip for giving me the opportunity when a lot of companies would be considering my record and me having no experience. And it was fair. It was fun. Um, while there were days where I, you know, wanted to cry or did cry, I would do it again because it was such a learning period and I really found out what I was made of and I kind of figured out who I was even more than I knew. Okay. Okay. That's why I said, don't, don't down to, I mean, don't down Swift. I mean, you know, I, I would tend to think that, you know, Swift, Swift, isn't a bad company as a lot of people perceive it to be. I just think it's the, it's, it's the drivers. And in some cases, the trainers that's, that's training these drivers, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not taking, it's a fly in here. Oh my God. It is, don't you, I, I, I hate when there's a fly get caught in the damn truck. I mean, it's oh, so, oh, oh. it is so freaking irritating when there's a fly and this one fly in the truck like literally and then you gotta take the time to like raise down the window and f and try to shush this motherfucker out of here sorry about that kind of oh, thing yeah he don't want to go nowhere either though no nah, he don't he don't want to go nowhere ain't that about nothing but uh, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I I don't think Swift is a is a bad company per se. I I just think it's more of 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 the people that's the 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 trainers and some of the and some of the inexperienced drivers there, you know, and you know not getting the proper training that they need to you know to be better drivers. Yeah, I totally agree. I honestly, I don't really have anything bad to say about Swift because they kept me running. You know, I got paid every week. And they, again, like, they are the ones that gave me the chance. Like you said, a lot of it comes from inexperienced drivers because they hire. They have such a high turnover rate simply because it is a starter company. So they're always bringing new drivers in. And that's where a lot of your bad reputation comes from. Hmm. You know, dry, you know, with drivers facing danger every day, I mean, something like, you know, we, we don't know when, when what's what's gonna bring, you know, day to day. How do you how do you get your day started and what are your what are some of your safe practices out here? So every morning I get up and automatically I just think to myself, like today is going to be a good day. No matter how bad the night before was. You know, no matter how tired I am, I always just remind myself, like, hey, today's going to be a good day. Um, and I just bring myself up with music, you know, read all the messages that come from the Qualcomm. I get my navigation ready. And that's pretty much how I start my morning. Make sure to wear very comfortable clothes. Uh, that's another big thing for me. And have, like, a really bomb playlist to keep me rolling through the day. Um, and safety-wise, I always always do my free trip and I'm the type of driver like I don't quickly do it I actually very thoroughly go over everything from under the hood to um you know checking tires checking everything on the trailer I'm very thorough with it because you just you honestly never know all right all right that's what's up that's what's up we gotta give you a got to give you that. <laughs> All right. So with, with, uh, so with being a female, you know, being a female driver out here, you know, you guys get thrown, you guys get thrown a lot of shit at you from, from, from different people, different drivers, different places. How do you handle, how do you handle that when, when, especially when truck drivers throw shit at you or try to discourage you or anything like that? Oh, 
lot of it is all in just your attitude. Um, I actually ran into that today um, mm. where I was at. And I just make sure to hold my head high. And, you know, if they're sitting back laughing, I just do it slowly, you know, get out and look. And honestly, I just don't pay attention to them. And eventually, if they start, you know, talking some bad shit, I might speak up and say something like, hey, you know. Now, um, I got my studio just like you. Like, I'm out here just like you every day. So. Now, let's back up a little bit. You say you got your CDLs back in 2018? Yes. So, what was what was, what was was it like trying to find uh, a trucking company that would give you the chance? I mean, what was... What was your research and what was some of the what was some of the uh, what was some of the things that people would say when you tell them about your, you know, your license and your background? Um, so trucking companies wise, I mainly do a search online. Like I did a broad search, like um, trucking companies hiring in whatever area. I originally just wanted local because, you know, being in a relationship especially being younger, it's just kind of like, I don't really want to be out this long. Mm -hmm. But a lot of companies that I talked to, you know, they would call me, and as soon as they would kind of figure out I'm a female, it was kind of automatically almost a, like, a doubt. You could just hear it. Like, um, you have your class A CDL, right? It's like, yeah. Uh, So my application, I have it. And it just, it was a lot of, questioning and I feel like men don't get questioned as much when applying. Mm-hmm. So they so when you told them that you had a lot of points on your license, but now it's your CDLs because it's you know that's it, it flips from being your regular license to now your CDL. So it's kind of like those points that was th- those points roll over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, sadly, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's kind of like when you when you tell them and they come back and say, "Oh, you you got so many points on your license." Like it kind of they they kind of thought that you got them points during the time you was driving. Like uh, uh, did they thought that you was that did they thought that you got those points while you was driving the semi, or they kind of yeah. figured out that you got it during you know previ- previous previous before you got your license or before you converted your license over to CDL? So most of the companies, um, they didn't think I got them in an actual commercial vehicle, but they did um, assume that I got them after I held my CDL. Mm -hmm. And basically what I would have to do is just explain to them, like, hey, you know, I got my CDL when I was 19. You know, I was young. I got most of my tickets at 16. And they're about to fall off. And I did do, I believe it was two tickets when I actually held my CDL. I got two after, one was cheating and one was for an accident, um, which is a completely other different mm-hmm. conversation. But um, I would just basically have to explain to them, like, you know, I was young. I was young. I didn't think I ever wanted to be a professional driver when I was 16, 17 years old. And a lot of them, they understood, but they couldn't proceed with, you know, the application or hiring process simply because I did not qualify. Wow. How many, how, how, how many, how many turned you down before you decided to wait until this year? I would say probably 15 or more. I called and called and the sad part is, um, I, it was probably almost a year and a half ago now, I applied to U.S. Express, and it was a dedicated route, and it went right through where I lived. It was perfect. Mm-hmm. I applied, and they accepted me. They made an oh, exception. Okay. And they were like, look, yeah, they were like, you're young. We get it. We are going to give you a second date. I said, okay, when can I start? So they gave me a date. It was two weeks out from when me and that recruiter had that conversation. I was scheduled for orientation. I was all set up. And I think it was three days before my lead date to go. I think they were, I can't remember what state they were out of. I want to say Tennessee. And 
three days before, I was coming home from the gym, and hydroplane in front of my car. And once they found out, because I called them, I'm like, look, I wrecked. I have a court date, you know, in 28 days. Oh, uh, can I still work? And they're like, no, because you're going to be issued a ticket. And there went that opportunity, and that was a year and a half ago. Wow. So that was a really messed up part. Wow. So in other words, they... Yeah. They they said yes. They they said yes and went through all the went through all the getting all your hopes up and everything and 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 only to only to come up there to get shot down and get sent back home. Well, I didn't even get the chance to go. So I actually called them on uh, that same night that I wrecked my car and I was like, Hey, I just want you to know like this happened and the hydroplane, you know, it's not a uh, preventable accident. And I was like, but, you know, I just wanted to let you know what happened, and I have to be here for court. And right there, they were like, no, because you will be a ticket. And that threw me basically over their um, ticket limit, and they were kind of like, a, you messed up your second chance. Wow. So, so what about, uh, what, what about, um, so you say about 15. Did you ever, did you try looking for uh, like owner operators and see if, if, if they would have give you, give you an opportunity? So I did. I actually had quite a few of the instructors in the place I got my CDL and they were owner ops and they kind of broke it down and they told me, you know, they were like, look, you're a good driver. You're going to be good. But, and the but was the insurance to cover me would be so high considering yeah. my record that they prop like it would be a ridiculous amount to insure me. So this is so this is discouraging. Like I can Im- I can imagine how you now you you being young and everything, you being young, I'm I'm sure this is like heartbreaking, like what the fuck? Like, what's? Did you at one point say to yourself, like, what's the point of all this? Why, why did I, uh, why did I even bother to get my my CDL if I'm not going to be able to use them? Yes, it definitely got to that point. And after the whole uh, U.S. Express thing, I that's exactly how I felt. I was like, why in the hell did I think I could ever do this? And you know, I was kicking myself in the butt, spending the money to get my CDL, and I was like, I'm never going to use it. Like, it's pointless. I just spent, you know, all this money out of pocket for nothing. And it, I felt like that for so long. And honestly, the only thing that brought me out of it um, was just, I actually got fired from my warehouse job during the whole, you know, outbreak of the virus. Wow. So they let me go, and that was that was when I was like, look, this is my chance. Both of my tickets have fell off. I only have one speeding ticket and one um, whatever ticket they wrote for the craft. I only have two tickets. I know something's going me. And I was like, this is my chance. And that's the only thing, honestly, the only thing that saved me from not using my CDL was getting fired. And wow. I'm so thankful. Like, every day, I'm so, so glad. that so that was so that was a blessing in disguise for you right there. You you didn't even anticipate on getting fired though, for real, right? I had no idea. We got laid off for a couple weeks. They brought me back, and then next thing you know, I was pulled to the office. So it was kind of like, hey, um, we gotta let you go. And let me tell you, I didn't think twice. I thanked them for the opportunity. I worked there for four years. I thanked them. I walked out that door, and I walked out happy. Because honestly, I was miserable. That's not what I wanted to do the rest of my life. And, you know, I cried a little bit because I was like, what am I going to do? And then that's when it clicked. I have my CDL. And I was like, at, like, so many places are hiring. And it was just, after that, like, I knew I was going to be okay. But now, you know, uh, well, you're you're in a truck now. So that's, you know, the, the uh, that's, that's, that's an achievement for you right there by you uh yeah. by you making it in the truck uh but do, you do know that you know there are other 
uh, you know, other uh, places that you could use your CDLs. I mean, you know, dump trucks, um, construction. Well, construction, I want to put construction over here because you got to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody to get into, to get into construction work. But, exactly. but like, you know, like garbage, you know, like, gar uh, like garbage trucks and stuff like that. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe a bus driver, you know, mm -hmm. I I'm, I'm going to put bus driver over here too. So bus driver yeah. and construction, I'm going to, I'm going to leave over there because same thing with bus drivers. You, you got to know somebody to know somebody to know somebody that yeah. know somebody to get in, to get into a, uh, bus deal but uh but yeah man but you 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 there now but let me ask you this you know nowadays you know doing the doing doing the covid because you came in you know like you say three months so you know covid been you know we've been dealing with this covid shit for about six months now so you came in a little bit after but since you you started with Swift, you you rocked out with Swift for that little bit of time, and you're now with your current company. How did the how did the COVID situation affect your trucking life in general? Honestly, it was a lot of you know upsets and a lot of obstacles to get over. Um, a lot of shipping and receiving offices were shut down. You know they. They let go a lot of their people as well and a lot of these different um, companies that we go to pick up loads for. And it made it very difficult to find what were we picking up. You know, sometimes there's no trailer numbers on there and we would have to just figure it out. And it was endless, like, phone calls to dispatch or whoever could help us. And another big thing, especially being a female, a lot of the restrooms were closed everywhere. So that was one of the hardest things to deal with. Okay, okay. So, I did, so being out here, being a female trucker, uh, unfortunately, there's some some situations that happen that happen to a few truckers out here. What extra precautions you take to protect yourself whenever you're in a situation or in a in a certain area while shutting down? So my biggest thing is I always keep my doors locked no matter what. Um, and depending on where I'm at, I always try to get in a really well-lit spot. Um, now, it's kind of hard, especially like tonight. I'm kind of running late, um, as in later on in the night, it's going to be harder to find parking. Um, my thing as a female, I never park or shut down by the road. That's just one thing I never do. Do you, um, you never, you I never shut do, down. You never shut down. Where now? Like on the side of the road. Like oh, on okay. Off yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is one thing I never do. It totally not only scares me of someone hitting me, but also you never know who's going to be around. Right. And for you know, as for your truck stop, like gloves, all that type rows, that's my normal go to. Um, they're, they don't have cameras, they're not really lit now. Are they safe? No. I have had someone drive me by my waist in a truck stop what? to try to get me to come to their truck. Yes. What? It's tell, um, tell, do tell. What, what happened? Look, uh, so, oh gosh, middle of the day, and I'm not sitting when I say this, but it's the middle of the day, I pulled over to take my 30, went mm -hmm. park. I mean, I'm right back in front of the building. I parked backed up there was a driver to my right and you know i saw him get out when i came i'm like oh you know he's going in so i locked my doors put my mask on he's like yelling driver i didn't think he was talking to me i don't know this dude and he was like swift so i turned around i saw something wrong so he's like yeah what's up he comes over he's talking 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 he's like you want to see my dog and i was like no sir i'm good like i'm on my 30 i need to get rolling right after and you know i need to go do my business when i need to get some food Okay, he hold, took all the oh, 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 hold up right quick. Oh, hold up right quick. <laughs> oh, hold up right quick. He he comes over. He comes over. He comes over, try to shoot game at you, trying to shoot his shot. And the thing that comes up 
out of his head or out of his mouth is that you want to come and see my dog. Really? Exactly. Yes. I mean, yes. not to say, how you doing, driver? Uh, would you like for me to, you know, would you like to go in there and get something to eat? Would you like to go to Subway and sit down to get to know each other? Uh, Burger King, yep. McDonald's or something like that. His thing was, you want to see my dog. No, let me buy you a coffee. It was, you want to see my dog? And I'm like, you know, no, sir. And that's when I started getting the creep vibes. I was like, nah, this is going to go well. Okay. This is an old, old, old dude. Okay. No teeth. Okay. I, I could take him any day. <laughs> <laughs> so this dude keeps talking, and I'm steady walking away. And finally, I turned around. I was like, look, I got to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I just kind of stopped and looked at him. I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. And he's like, oh, okay. So I got one on in, do my business, come back out. So I put it in my hand. He's walking again. I'm trying to get up to the truck. So okay. at that point, he grabs me by my waist and says, oh, where are you going? I don't know if he thought I was a lot lizard or what, but <gasps> let me go. Wow. Yeah, wow. it was the, a day. The, the blatancy yeah. of, of, of some guys out here, man, that's, that's crazy. It's you know, yeah, and, and I don't, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to say anything, anything bad about my female truckers. You know what I'm saying? I am down yeah. with 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 my female truckers. You know, I, you know, there's some, there's some, there's some female truckers out here that's 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 built like a brick house. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. My. Uh, you know, for for safety reasons, okay, because I, I understand you want to be, you you want to be feminine, you you want to be girly girl. I got, I get that. You you want to come out and 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 look, you know, look good, but you might not want to look too good. Is 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 that safe to say? You don't want to look oh. too good. You just want to look good enough to not be uh, hassled or or anything like that. Is is that safe to no, say? I'm totally not mad at you for saying that whatsoever. And this is actually kind of a double-edged sword right. because I feel... I feel like I should be able to come out here and wear, you know, a decently linked sundress, some mm -hmm. clothes, toe shoes, look cute, hair mm -hmm. down, nails. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. I, like you said, I want to keep my femininity regardless of what career I'm in. Right. And being, you know, a female, I'm very big on that, especially being in a male-dominated um, industry. But, mm -hmm. as you said, I also now, I do not try to draw attention no matter, like, where I'm at or what I do, I dress in, you know, if I have shorts, they're knee length, they're not tight, you know. I don't even like wearing leggings. And it's sad because I do want to wear these, you know, dresses or um, yoga pants, leggings, you know, clothes I love to wear and are really cute. But it's just so messed up because even as a woman, this is my biggest problem right now. Um, Women are so objectified, you know, in general in society, but in the trucking world, it is so much worse. There's, you know, there's this, uh, you know, I, I I watch YouTube a lot, <laughs> and I, I I come across uh, a lot, especially a lot of female uh, truckers. Uh, it's this one particular female. Well, it's a couple of particular females. Uh, truckers out here that's like, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a man. I, I, I'm going to watch. I, I'm going <laughs> to look. You know, you got the bang and the pow going on. Of course, I'm I'm going to look. But I just feel that some of the some of the some of the wares that they that they that they wear for the day, like, I mean, I understand if you want to. Again, don't get me wrong, ladies. Don't take me the wrong way. You know, if you want to come out here and look all sexy and all like that, that's cool too. But don't get mad if 
you have, you know, have a guy that's looking you down way a little bit too much because of what you got on. Now, I know what y'all about to say. Y'all about to say, <laughs> I know what y'all about to say. Y'all about to say lockout, man. Uh, so, you know, it's my body. I want to do what I, and it's, yes, it is your body. And you're not asking for none of that. None of that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you get out your truck, you know, with the, with the, with the, with the booty shorts on and the, and the, and the tight leggings and the bodysuit. Yeah, I'm going to look. But don't get mad if, you know, you, you get the cat calls on your way from the truck to the love's door. Because I guarantee you, you're going to get that. <laughs> you know, you're going to get that. Ooh. Hey, how you doing? Hey, ooh, look at that right there. Yeah, you're going to get that. You're going to get that. Don't get mad at me, though. I'm going to be sitting right here in my truck, just peeping you out from a distance. <laughs> but, and, uh, and I I agree with some of what you're saying, but let me play devil's advocate. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, go ahead. Go ahead. I disagree a little because the thing, like you said, it's our body. Now, when I get dressed, I get dressed for me. I don't get dressed for no one else except, you know, when me and my boyfriend go out, yeah, I'm going to be like, ooh, I'm going to look cute for him. Uh -huh. Me and I here, no. I'm, I'm looking cute because I don't feel like a woman because I'm trapped in a, you know, uh, industry where men rule out here. Right. And you know, looking at five. I will be the first to say, even when I see a good looking female, I'm like, oh, okay, sis, like, do your thing, girl. Right. I, I'm all for it. I am all, I will even, you know, I'm just like, girl, you go ahead, you bad. But there's a difference between looking and appreciating and going on about your day and, or someone literally having to go out of their way to say something. You know, if a man, if I'm out and I look good, you know, I'm looking at you, and a man goes, hey, you know, ma'am, I just want to tell you, you're beautiful. And he goes along his very way. I'm going to appreciate that compliment, and it's going to make me feel good. The mm -hmm. catcalling is is too much. Like, now, that is where now I the think compliment. Just, now, don't get me wrong. The compliment, I'll, I'll give you a compliment. If I see a nice-looking female... <laughs> If I see a nice looking female, yeah, I'd say, hey, how you doing? You know, you looking, you know, you looking kind of good out here. But don't get mad because you got them, you, 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 you got these females out here now. You got these females out here. They, you know, they be in their nice little outfits. They, you know, they, they looking good, smelling good, feeling good. And uh, a guy like me come along and be like, yay, how you doing? You know, you looking good, you know, you know, stay safe out there, driver, yada, yada, yada. But you get mad at me because I'm speaking to you. It, it's all in the approach. So if you approach them like a subtle, and I'm not saying you do, I'm just saying, like mm -hmm. if you approach them like a creep, and if you are aggressive towards a woman, and I'm not saying like aggressive as in I'm going to like feel like, hit you or kidnap you, but aggressive as in, like, being pushy. Okay. It automatically, it makes females feel unsafe. And right. I don't know about every female, but I'm just talking from my perspective. But it makes me feel unsafe, so automatically, yeah, I'm going to get off here to you. I'm going to be like, who do you think you're talking to? Like, attitude, hell, you're going to get that. But if you just subtly approach it, be like, hey, man, you're beautiful, whatever. But let's 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 it. So, if guys, say women were more powerful than men, and women ruled the trucking industry, as in, like, there was maybe one out of ten drivers for men. Y'all jump out, and y'all are, you know, in your little gray sweatpants and, I don't know, tank top. And all the women are just sitting there, like, uh, commenting on, you know, what, what you're packing, and we're looking you up and down, and constantly making you feel like you don't even want to be seen. Like, that's the difference. It's different to compliment someone and go on your way and do it in a way that's respectful and be disrespectful about it. And a lot of the women are so tired of the disrespectful men. When it comes to a man who does it respectfully, we don't even want to hear it anymore. We already are overlooking it. Like, dude, don't even talk. Like, before you say anything, we already know you're looking at us. We already know you're going to say something. And we're tired of it. Like, just let me be myself, let me come in here, 
get a cup of coffee, let me go like take a shower, wash my ass, do what I gotta do without being, you know, harassed. Because every, I'll tell you what, every day that I've been out here, I have been harassed in some sort of way. And it's ridiculous. It gets very tiresome. And it gets very, just mentally, it drains you mentally, emotionally, and even like physically. Do you? Like I said, I don't, oh, go ahead. Do you, do you fabulous, do you, do you ever feel kind of intimidated do you feel kind of scared out here when when you got when you got so many you know so many guys out here that's 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 harassing you do you do you feel do you feel some kind of way now sometimes um for the most part i know i can handle myself and i don't say that to like do my own porn but you know i know if there's a situation i'm positive that i can you know, somehow get out of it. But yes, it, there are times when I I just feel totally unsafe because you never know. And there are your guys out here that are, you know, life savers. I've met a lot of good men and women who look out for everyone. I've had men tell me, hey, you might want to go park someone else. Dude is creepy. You know, I've had so many people even like stand outside my truck to get my attention to be like, hey, I would move it because, you know, so-and-so has been following a girl around. So <laughs> it all depends on where I'm at, what situation I'm in. For the most part, I feel okay, but there are certain situations where I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore for the simple fact of this thing. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, I, you know, first I want to I, I want to thank you for taking the time uh, taking the time out your little, you know, little schedule to uh, to chop it up with me. I really do appreciate it. Fabulous. F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. Um, now, you haven't been over the road long. Uh, f- you haven't been over the road long. A little bit, you know, a little bit, three months. Uh, started with Swift. Now you with uh, your current company. Uh, you did say that you appreciated what Swift brought to you. And you know, gave you your, you gave you the opportunity. Um, what made I mean, if Swift gave you all of that, what made you, what made you leave? Like, why why did you leave Swift? I mainly left because it was all. At first, I was only supposed to be out three to four weeks. I was fine with that. You know, even being a month out, I felt like I could track my money, make good money, come home, have five six days off, and go to the kids. Um, and then they kind of switched up saying, yo, no, five, six, and their biggest thing was because, you know, under the eyes of the law, I'm single because I'm not married and I don't have kids. So they pushed me and they didn't want to get me home. And that was something I didn't like. You know, I have family that's getting older. I have a niece that's, you know, growing up and I want to be around for that. And of course, my boyfriend, I didn't, it was not fair to him. I mean, we've been together four years. It's not mm-hmm. fair for me to just up and leave and be like, oh, no, oh well, you know, bye. I'm not that type of person. And it really got to the point, it boiled down to, like, just hearing everyone, you know, every day I miss you when are you coming home. And it it hurt because, like, I'd get on the phone with my grandmother who's getting older and who's had multiple strokes. You know, I've heard her say, you know, I miss you. I'm not going to be around forever. And that hurt. And then talking to my niece, who's only two and a half, say, you know, I miss you. Why did you leave me? You know, that hurt. And then on top of that, someone I love, you know, so much, you know, being like, hey, when are you coming home? I just want to see you. So all of that piled up. It got very heavy on the heart, the mind. And I couldn't focus because. I, you know, I wanted to be on the phone with them, make sure everyone knew, like, I still love them. I wasn't leaving them behind. And it just got to the point, like, I was like, enough, enough. I at least need to be home, you know, every two weeks or something. And that was the main reason why I left. Okay, okay. And the, and the company that you're at now gave you, didn't, didn't give you no issues now that everything dropped off your license, right? There was absolutely no issue getting on with this company, and I'm so thankful for that. All right, that's what's up. What are some of the what are some of the basics that, in your opinion, that 
every, well, every female truck driver should have on the road. Oh, ooh, there's so many of them. Um, you mean like material things or? Mm, maybe it could be material, maybe mental, you know. What, what do you think they should, what they should bring? So definitely bring um, a good attitude because that's, and that's not only for females, but for everyone. Um, a positive attitude brings you a long way in this industry. Um, a support system is always very nice, so I would make sure to have at least that one person who you know you can rely on to answer the phone at any time of night. Um, Material-wise, baby bites are your best friend. Like, <laughs> I know, right? I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, right? I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Baby wipes. Yeah. Get some. Baby wipes. <laughs> because you're going to be For in, real. You're going to be in some places that, you know, you won't be able to get that shower in or <laughs> you uh, you had to end up using that porter potty. Yeah. Baby wipes. Oh, it's so bad. Have some. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I agree <laughs> with you on that. Ba- baby wipes, yo. Your best friend. Yes. Knock <laughs> it. Like, knock it up. I don't care what you're doing. Get you some baby wipes. Yeah, oh. for sure. For sure. Well, fabulous. F A B O L O U S. I loved your name, man. How did you come up with that? I, I, I love that name. I love that name. If you had, uh, if you can go back, if you can go back, would you would have got into, would you, I, out of all the stuff that happened to you, would you would have got into trucking? And if and if you couldn't get into trucking, then what would have been a plan B for you? Um, I would change the thing, honestly. And if I couldn't get into trucking, um, I actually started from the time where I wrecked my car to a couple months ago when. I started to switch. I was actually entering into medical school. So I was actually going to be in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So that would have been uh, plan C, D, E, F, basically. (laughs) You would have been, that that would have been, uh, that would have been, uh, that would have been all of it, right? Right then and there, huh? Oh, yes. And I'm still planning to get that medical degree. And, you know, trucking's not my forever job or lifestyle but i'm here to stay for a while whether y'all like it or not well that's what's up that's what's up people you know people get into trucking for uh for different uh for different reasons hold on right quick shape world just commented (laughs) <laughs> no shape world this is the behind the scenes uh this is the behind the scenes so the actual the actual picture will be on the actual podcast when i edit it and all like that right now this is just behind the scenes but who we have uh who we have right now is the fabulous trucker f a b o l o u s f a b o l o u s um fabulous you know people get into this trucking game for different reasons you know they got they they got their goals you know set different goals and all like that what is what are your goals as a as as a female truck driver Huh, number one goal is to just make it home every week. But if we're talking long term, I definitely want to be able to save enough money. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, a little bit of money. And I would eventually like to buy my own truck and put someone else in it to drive while I finish out that. So that right now would probably be my five ish year goal. Um, again, I don't have kids. I don't have that expense, so I can really save money. And, you know, I would like to just see as much as I can out on the road. I would like to make as much money as possible, meet really good people, save some money, buy me drugs. And honestly, just go from there. I have not thought further than that yet. Okay, that's what's up. Do you, since you got that, since that's one of your goals, do you, do you want to go and 
see if you can buy a truck out or do you want to or do you want to go and and lease at least lease a truck to see if you can if you can handle it um that is also a tricky one um i would preferably buy one out and do it that way and that's kind of one thing um for working with a company it's given me the experience to where if i do buy myself a truck i will already you know i will have the knowledge not to tear it up you know i would know how to save on fuel mileage on idle time. It's just little things like that. It prepares me. So I think I would rather buy one out straight up. All right, all right. Fabulous trucker, everybody. <laughs> F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. <laughs> Got to remind myself when I when I do the editing to put the uh, – put put the uh rapper fabulous saying the the words while after i say it so i got f-a-b-o-l-o-u-s lockout man when you edit so when you go back lockout man when you go back and see this yeah remember to put that in <laughs> so that okay. so that when i go back and edit i can see myself talking to me <laughs> well thank you <laughs> thank you very much uh fabulous trucker thank you for coming on and uh chopping it up with me i really do appreciate it uh now i know you i know you haven't been driving long you know you 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 a fresh new jack but do you have any since you've been out here do you have any tips or any advice for any uh, aspiring females that's that's thinking about coming out here? Uh, yes. Just don't let anyone tell you you can't do something simply because you're a female because we can do anything just like a man can do except two times better. So that's my number one tip for my young lady trying to get it. Well, that's what's up. And that's what's that's one to grow on, everybody. Fabulous trucker. F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. Thank you for coming on. F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S. If you guys want to come on. You're very welcome. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with the lockout man, you can do that. You can hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockout man podcast at gmail.com. Or come over to Instagram and hit me up over there. Once you hit me up over there, you can probably find me in the messenger. Hit me up over there. Until, you know, come on and get at me. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more. And make sure you hit that all button so when I do drop a video or drop a live feed, you guys will see it and come in and join and chill, relax, listen, however you guys want to do it. If you want to support your boy, I appreciate it if you support me very much. Hook me up with some coffee, man. Thanks to uh, thanks to Mom Deuce Love for the uh, for the uh, cash app. I went and got me some uh, got me some tea this morning. So I forgot the name of the tea, but thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. You can hit me up in that. The coffee app is in the description below, and the cash app is lockout dollar sign lockout me until next time everybody i will thank you for i mean i would thank you for watching thank you for listening and thank you to my special guest the fabulous trucker f-a-b-o-l-o-u-s f-a-b-o-l-o-u-s we're gone and we're out peace